what we're going to show you is immensely important to the lives of your children. They need to understand the course that we are on and how they can change it. And if we have good charts and we know how to read them, the century could lead to a far greater future than people even imagine possible today. As we look at the span of centuries, past and future, the 21st century is absolutely critical. It has a very special meaning. The 21st century, I think, is going to have a very special place in history, a very, very extraordinary place. And as we look at it today, we can see that the outcome could be magnificent, or it could be a new dark ages. And so the reason for setting up the 21st century school in Oxford is to try and look at the problems, the dangers, the opportunities of the 21st century. Many of them are very complex, and because they are complex, they need scholarship. Because the big problems are all multidisciplinary problems that connect together many different disciplines. So this is a school which almost everything it does is concerned with multidisciplinary academia. If one looks at the centuries past, the 18th century started something very extraordinary. The Industrial Revolution happened, and that began an avalanche of technology which is getting faster and faster, greater and greater momentum. You might think of it as being like an avalanche going down a mountainside, getting more momentum every year. As we look at many of the basic ideas in science today, which will take a very long time to turn into reality, it's clear that this avalanche is going to go on into the 22nd century, 23rd century, and maybe for many centuries into the future. Now, there comes a certain point in time where the avalanche is, has such momentum that it becomes dangerous to humanity. And humanity's really got to put controls into place to make life decent with this avalanche. Yes, we are going to survive the 21st century. Now, there may be terrible things that happen, and so when you say, are we going to survive, it may be only 1% of us will survive. But uh, the, the military, for example, now are finding all sorts of ways that if the very worst happens, a lot of people will survive. Yeah. There are deep holes in the ground with all sorts of facilities at the bottom. The nuclear submarines have got food. The nuclear submarine has enough uh, power to, to keep going for 15 years. So uh, if there was a terrible world war, you'd have the nuclear submarines heading to some safe place in the southern hemisphere, possibly going to the Antarctic. So there's no question in my mind that homo sapiens will survive. Right. But it might be an awful lot of, you know, three years, uh, th 30 years from now, a new word may be in our vocabulary, a uh, giga famine. Mm -hmm. So you're a mixture there, aren't you? Because uh, if I ask you the question, are you basically an optimist about the 21st century? There's part of you that says yes, but there's also part of you saying this could be a very, very tragic century too. Well, I don't think of myself as either an optimist or a pessimist. I like to think of myself as more like an engineer in which there are huge problems to be solved. And if we use the very best professionals and we can solve them, you might imagine Earth as being like a, a ship which is heading into a hurricane and nobody's reading the instruments at the present time. The 21st century revolution could happen in two ways. First, there may be grand scale catastrophes which sweep the Earth and the stunned survivors recover and try to put the controls into place which will stop them happening again. Second, we could have the understanding of what can go wrong and make sure that we develop the technology and governance and good management that prevents it happening. Today, we have the capability to put into place global education for the second option. We need to do it soon.